Hello once again and welcome to my channel. This is JCL Tutorials. Thank you for clicking on this video and I'm sure you are also going to subscribe. All right, so in my last video, I did something on financial and investment issues where I took you through what content they have put under the basic seven, that is year one, at the basic school or the junior high school level. We treated something on social security, the meaning, the benefits, and the types. I believe you understood that lesson. If you have not checked it up, you need to get to watch and learn from there then you cannot build up what i'm going to do in this particular lesson is to take it to another level where we have the basic eight aspects that talks about the employer and the employee now the employer and the employee are two people that come into a certain agreement and this is a contract and they have terms and conditions that the two parties or two people will agree on before services can be rendered by the employee we will relate what we are going to learn to the social security issue where the social security has to be provided for this employee or the employees and what does the institution social security and national insurance trust as we have in ghana say about the employer and what must the employer do to support the employee what must the employee also do as an obligation as far as the pension scheme or the trust is concerned so that is what we'll be looking at under the financial and investment issues part two in this video I would like you to get set and let's get into that now, if you are talking about the employer and employee then we need to know who the employer is then we have to know what obligations the employer has as far as the pension scheme is concerned so i'm sure you are guessing and you can tell simply who an employer is i'm sure in a layman's view you just be saying okay a job giver someone who gives work to somebody to do and he pays he is the one who actually rewards whatever services is being rendered or given. This is one definition you can consider. So an employer is the owner of an establishment or the person who has the ultimate control over the affairs of an establishment. You get and with whom the worker entered into a contract or service, contract or service. So you take note of these keywords. Yes. The owner of an establishment, the owner of an agency, the owner of an institution. You get it so maybe that company is the establishment they are talking about and that person has people or there is going to be somebody that is going to go into or enter a contract with and the person is supposed to render a service so that gives you an idea of who the employee will be so this is the employer the job giver the one who is signing the contract and he has the what ultimate control over the affairs of an establishment the establishment could be the firm or the company so when you look at this it simply gives you an idea clear idea of who the employer is and we will get into the employee so the service is rendered or apprenticeship and who is responsible this is still referring to the employer responsible for the payment of what his salary could be a salary or wages so hourly wages people pay based on the number of hours that you have worked that can be accepted in some societies or that is practice very common in uh, advanced countries and people also pay monthly salaries monthly salary so they just look at what you have done and they pay you according to that so let's see what the employee will give us so in simple terms you have the employee as a what person who is hired to work for another or for a business firm in return for payment person has to be paid he's going to render a service he's going to do or perform some form of task or level of task and the person will have to be paid for that so that is the employee you see over there so a farmer can be an employee a doctor police officer a teacher people who work and after they deliver their service or they render their service they are paid for that those are the employees or this is who we call an employee very simple right easy to get now let's quickly look at what the employer must do so the employer is the one who has the ultimate as you've seen in that definition he has the ultimate control he decides the terms and the contract and whatever must go into that kind of agreement between he himself and then the one is giving the work to or who is going to render the service pension scheme come in different form we have 
hours the act 766 SNIT is an institution managing employees retirement or the pension scheme and whatever goes there we'll delve into what SNIT does and their details how the entire thing and the regulatory body came about with all their objectives and other things but now let's just focus on if you are an employer in ghana what does the institution require from you or the institution state that you are obliged to do as far as you have a relationship with your worker or your employee so this is for the employer employer now the employer must ensure that all employees are what, registered under the scheme the employer must ensure that all employees are registered all the workers his workers are registered under the scheme because part of their contributions are going to be taken there is a percentage they will take and that will be given to SNIT as a fund manager and SNIT will keep that when the workers go on retirement that is what they are going to enjoy he or she must make regular contributions on behalf of the workers to SNIT he or she must make regular contribution on behalf of the workers or SNIT apart from ensuring that they are registered he has to what make or she has to make regular contribution regular and it's monthly that is where he's going to what, deduct 5.5 percent of the worker salary whatever is paying to each worker 5.5 percent of the worker salary every month and add 13 percent of the worker's basic salary the basic salary is what the worker takes home yes so that's the basic salary to make 18.5 percent so he has to do all these calculations, strike them. So he's paying a worker uh, 1,000 CDs or 3,000 or 8,000 or 10,000 CDs. He will strike the percentage, pick that, add it to the 13%, and that becomes 18% and to remit or pay to SNIT to be kept in that worker's or employee's account. Out of the 18.5, the employer is to remit, yes, to pay. So I'm making a contribution. 13.5% to the trust within 14 days of the ensuing month. When the month ends, that is what the employer must do. And if he is not able to pay at that particular month, that ending, he has to ensure that the following month, it does not cross 14. That's the date. It does not cross 14, the time, the period. He has two weeks to make sure that he pays for the previous month. And he is definitely going to pay for the subsequent month too as well. So that is what the employer must take note of. He is obliged to do this. Otherwise, the institution can take an action on him. From that contribution, he has to be aware that the people he has as workers, or she has as workers, the contribution that is being given to SNIT, out of the 13.5 that SNIT takes, 2.5 goes into the national health insurance yes that account uh, goes to the national health insurance authority that's the percentage so SNIT does that deduction when the money gets to them he is to ensure just to ensure that every employee's own is paid on time the employer shall accompany each contribution payment with a list of what workers indicated so there must be a contribution report so as he is paying there must be a list he must have that list that you add or use to support whatever payment he has made to show or prove that that, is, that he has made the payment for the workers. So they must have, because the employees will have their secu social security numbers, and that is why he has to attach the contribution report to, and that will be uh, received by the Social Security and National Insurance Trust. Look at the next one. The employer must also ensure that contribution reports are submitted by the end of what? The month, whether contributions are paid, are remitted to the trust or not. So there must be a report. That report will even make them pay regularly because they will have to follow. Now see what happens. The penalty is 3% per month imposed on every unpaid contribution. So additional penalty of 3% per month on the contributions plus penalty may be imposed if after written demand notice the employer fails to pay so SNIT could just give you some allowance or some time to make sure you pay 
Ah, they will be expecting that. And they will write to you and inform you that you haven't paid. All companies that have workers must register their business, their companies. And the moment they start paying, SNIT knows that these are the institutions, these are the firms, these are the companies that pay SNIT for their workers. They pay their pension contributions for their workers. And that must be done. Yes, so that is where the penalty comes. Now, if the employer has these obligations to adhere to, then what must the employee himself, the worker, what must he do? So let's look at that of the worker. The employee's obligation. Now every worker who has an employer-employee relationship, it means that you have signed a contract, you are working for someone, and it is documented. The person has given you an appointment letter or something to prove that, yes, indeed, I have an agreement with you, a contract with you. It means you are rendering the service to that person. It means you have to be registered and must have your number. Now look at the second one. Every worker should have only one social security number. So the number is just one. And that is what is linked to any company that you are working for, any firm that you are working for. It's the same number you are going to use. And let's see, use same social security number for your whole working life. So I'm a worker in Ghana. I must make sure that that number that I have, I use it for my whole working life. If I change my current job and I move to a different place, I must make sure that it's that same number I provide or submit to my employer. And my employer must give that to SNIT and start paying my contribution. All right. So the social security number is not transferable. It's not spiritual powers. It's not a property that you transfer. I'm about to die. So then I call my children. This is my social security number. You can use it when I'm not there. It's, it's, not, it's not like that. So um, it's unique and it has to be used by just the person who signed up for that. So he is the one that must use that number and it is not transferable as you are seeing over there. Change your dependents regularly. That's for the, to the employee. The employee or every worker must know that yes, there's a form you have filled. Day in, day out, some information about you can change and you can go or prompt it to update. You get it. Update any information over there. And it is advisable to always what? Change your dependence regularly, at least once every five years. In a period of five years, a lot of things might have come your way or happened to someone. Maybe the person was single and got married later and now has children. So you can quickly prompt or inform SNIT and they will document the names over there because if they are not there, you know, last time we spoke about survivors lump sum and that must be enjoyed by, it, by the dependents when the contributor dies before age 60 or when the contributor dies before age 75 after he has gone or she has gone on retirement. So take note of that. A member shall take steps to update or correct any missing or inaccurate information in the statement of account presented by SNIT and support it with any with relevant accurate documents. Get accurate documents. If you are changing your date of birth, uh, probably there should be an affidavit backing that, supporting that, proving that. So you just can't walk to SNIT and tell them that you are changing your date of birth because you just remember that you were born last uh, a month before or a month later or some time later or something. That's that. that it's not allowed, it's not accepted. So you have to make sure you go through the right procedures if you are changing details. Maybe your name was spelled wrongly or something on the form. When you check that spellings, names of dependents and all those things, you have to be very sure because these are the names you provide to authenticate or to prove that you have a contract, a deal, or some form of agreement with the people. And the people must know, they must be able to identify those you have put over there. So that is what the employee has to do. So these six points, at least if you have four of them, you are good to go. In the exams, you, are asked, you can write all these and make sure you score your marks. You know they are straightforward, so your spelling must be accurate. Your information too must be accurate. Don't change the uh, points or try to lie or add something that is not in that uh, document as stated by SNIT. So this is what employer, employee, and what they must do.
as far as the pension scheme or the social security issues are concerned. Yeah. I believe you understood this part. This is the area that has to do with the basic eight or the level two. So the part two one ends here. In my next video, which is the part three, we'll move into the basic nine where we will talk about the social security itself, how the act came into existence, how it was established. We'll look at the previous ones that they used and, and get to the current one we are using and what they seek to achieve and what they want to do for workers in Ghana, or Ghanaian workers. Now, I will talk about that in my next video. Catch me there. Make sure you are always connected. Share this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do that. Like, comment, put your questions over there, and I will try as much as possible to address them. All right. This is what I have for you today. This is JCL Tutorials. Keep watching. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.